Hello, I'm Frank Evans, the film editor of The Warwick Ball, and today I'm speaking to Carl Gelmer, the star of the new film Dinner in America, which will be available on streaming services across the UK starting on the 1st of June. Kyle, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm very well. My first question was, how did it feel to play Simon, a character that has absolutely no filter? <laughs> um, freeing, I guess. You know, it's kind of... Um... It was it was fun, you know. It's 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 it is. It's a pretty freeing kind of unique experience, and it, it it's something you you know you don't get to do a lot in your life. I feel like nowadays people are very you know influenced by things around them. You know, with social media and things like that. You know, everybody's creating their own version of life on Instagram or whatever I feel like people you know kind of change their personalities or who they are to please other people I mean there's there's a million different versions of that and to be somebody and play somebody who is just so authentically himself and really wasn't worried about what anybody thought or didn't care about you know what anybody said he was just always going to be himself and nothing was going to change that you know there's something freeing in that there's also I think you know a bit of a lesson there that it's like don't you know don't you know don't twist yourself up into a pretzel to like please everybody else like if they don't like you for who you are they can get fucked it's like you still got some of the energy of the character there that's <laughs> yeah I think um it, it's funny because a lot of the stuff I played um when I was younger, you know, it was a lot of angsty teens, but, you know, I guess we're all a little angsty in our, our teenage years, but, um, you know, it was a lot of like heavy drama stuff and, and things like that. And I, I actually think, you know, there's a big part of Simon that's actually probably closer to who I actually am than a lot of these other things that I've played. Right. Well, I, th I think the definite thing with Simon is that throughout the film, at first you think he's a sh quite a shocking, scary person, but then near the end, yeah. he's so sweet. He's so kind and warm. Yeah, that's that's the thing is it's like, I think, you know, I think what Simon does is Simon's definitely a button pusher. I think he, um, I think he tests people's threshold. I think he, I think it's a way he kind of gets a read on people. And with, with Patty in particular, I think he really pushes it kind of, far because patty doesn't give him the typical response you know she almost doesn't react to him at all which for him is weird you know it's 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 different it's something that you know i think he is as confused by as he is you know interested in um but at the end of the day like while Simon does say and do some questionable things, I think his moral compass is in line, you know, I think he, like how he defends Patty on the bus, you know, I, I think like, I think he would step in, like if he sees people getting made fun of for, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was, you know, if it was somebody on the bus getting made fun of for their sexual orientation or the color of their skin or things like that, like, I think Simon would step in in those moments as as well. You know, I, I think, like I said, while he does and says some messed up stuff, I do think, I think he knows what's right and what's wrong and will kind of, you know, defend those things. He's, a, he's an interesting guy. He's, he's like, he really is. I think my favorite moment with the character might be when he smokes the joint on the roof with Kevin. Yeah, that's that's what I mean is it's like, you know, it's not all fire and brimstone all the time, you know, it, it, he can settle down and he can take these, these nice thoughtful moments with, with people because I, I think, you know, I think there is also a part of him that has his, he feels like he has his back against the wall, especially when you meet him, you know, in this, in this spot in his life. Um, so to have moments that slow down like that, you know, I think you get to really kind of see through the, the exterior, that hard exterior that he, he puts up and he's actually like not a bad guy. So th throughout the film, it's 
very, very music heavy. There's this big focus on this sort of 90s world of uh, punk rock and Riot Girl music. Do you have a personal connection to the music in the film? Yeah, I mean, I grew up listening to like punk and, hard and hardcore music. Um, like all through my teens and 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 so that world is not you know is not unfamiliar to me um it's it's fun you know it's it has its own heartbeat its own rhythm its own you know its own thing its own life um so to be able to live in that space was nice and and um exciting to to do that again and and you know to be able to record the punk music was like teenage kyle's like dream come true and um so yeah i do i do have a connection to that world how did you first become involved in the film um so i actually got sent the script i i read for a movie that i wasn't right for but i made friends i i, I became close enough with the director of that film that I didn't get that we exchanged numbers um and he actually texted me and was like hey this guy I know is making this movie that I think you'd be right for can I send you can we send you the script and that was about three years before I made the movie and I was in the middle of filming a tv show called Outsiders at the time and I had two two kids that were babies I mean really young and I was just like distracted as can be. I, I read the first couple pages and then closed it and never got back to it. Cut to a couple years later, like three years later, I'm shooting this movie in Romania. And the DP was like, yeah, we were supposed to shoot this movie that ended up getting shut down, like an actor pulled out or something like that. And he's like, you would actually be perfect for it. And I asked him what it was and he said this movie called Dinner in America and the, the name triggered and I was like, I think I've heard of that. And I looked in my email and sure enough, I still had the script from three years before. I typed in Dinner in America and it popped up. And so I finally sat down and read it. And I was like, this thing's crazy. Like this movie is really kind of out of control and I think I love it. <laughs> um, and I would love to meet the director if he's still willing to meet me. And luckily, um, luckily he still wanted to meet, Adam still wanted to meet because I had been offered the movie like years ago. And so we Skyped for a couple hours and um, thankfully he still wanted me to be in it so we kind of high-fived I was in Romania at the time so you know we like digitally high-fived about it and um you know and and a couple months like a month and a half two months later I was on set you know making this movie and um actually the DP who's shooting that other movie shot Dinner in America um as well so we went back to back movies together and he he's he's the whole reason like I I ended up back in in the film and he's actually a big punk and hardcore fan and that's like how me and him kind of started our bond we actually went and saw um uh Dead Kennedys in Romania together and like the director Adam <clears throat> Adam was like creeping on us from like other people's Instagram accounts sending us like pictures of ourselves <laughs> and, um it was just cool, man. It was it was pretty serendipitous, and I'm really fortunate the way it it turned out. Well, when I was talking with uh, Adam, he mentioned James Dean. Is there any film performances that you found inspirational when you were playing Simon? He mentioned James Dean in terms yeah. of what? When he was talking about sort of your style and your look, he said that you kind of had a, a James Dean vibe. Well, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> um. Was, was there any inspiration, like movies that took inspiration from for Simon? Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, no. I know that's weird. It was more like I just, I made like playlists and music and, and things like that. And it was more like, it was more trying to harness it was more about trying to harness that aggression and energy in an authentic way. You know, and I think uh, that that music stirs something up in me that it's like, okay, just keep that rhythm, keep that, 
like that beat going in your head. Like that's what has to be, you know, that, that kind of spinning feeling has to be, you know, constant in him. So it was more about like the music and the physicality and creating Simon sort of from the ground up between the walk and how he sits and how he eats. And it's very like primal and animalistic and very, you know, there's, it was more about building that stuff for me um, that that's when he started to come alive, you know, and I had conversations with Adam about all that and, you know, the way I wanted Simon to talk and the way I wanted, you know, him to move. And, and, and that to me was more what I needed than, you know, really watching other, other stuff. For me, it was more music and physicality driven than anything else. Do you have a, a favorite memory from the shooting of the film? Man, that, I know it's going to be like such a cliche answer. Like we had so much fun, but like <laughs> this really, this really was, you know, because I will admit I've had movies I've fucking hated making. <laughs> you know, I've had movies that aren't that fun. I've had movies that are fine. I've had movies that have been a blast. Um, this was one of those where it was like every day was like a joy because it was so many unique locations so many interesting people always coming in and out um the work relationship and friendship i had built with adam and emily um became such a special thing i mean we still like text all the time talk all the time like i called emily yesterday like we've all become really really close and there's so many fun days i mean between like the whole dinner day like the leah thompson stuff where you know the dinner and flipping the table and smashing through the window and lighting shit on fire to like doing the watermelon song scene with emily to you know getting revenge on the bullies and then the whole arcade montage like there's so much there's just so much fun stuff you know it was like it was one of those where it was just so sad it was over you know it was it was like summer camp <laughs> <laughs> you, you've mentioned the scenes with the bullies i think one of the times that simon first comes across very relatable and sympathetic is when he just gets beaten up by them when he tries to stand up to them the first time that's the best thing is like you expect simon to like be, be like yeah he's gonna get the <laughs> you know <he's, laughs> and then it's just such a twist where they're like no they beat the shit out of him you know um so they get revenge in their own way. But yeah, it is. It is like, it is a very kind of human moment. And that's what I mean. Like he will, he'll put himself in harm's way to like stand up for what's, what's right. I mean, he'll, you know, he'll get you back in the end, but he'll do what he's got to do. Absolutely. Throughout the film, there is this kind of outcast couple on the run kind of vibe which reminded me of films like badlands a little bit yeah how, how did it feel playing that sort of like outcast outsider kind of character against mainstream society i mean i think it's i think it's cool you know you do have movies that that have lived in that world but i do think i think it's i think movies like that are good man i think it you know there's a lot more I think the world has created much more of the outcasts, you know what I mean? And the so-called quote unquote weirdos and the whatever, if you've been called different or you've been called, there's way more of, I mean, I've been called fucking weird. I've been called everything under the sun. I literally had someone tell me like the other day, they're like, he's like an alien. You're like, you're not even from here, <laughs> you know? And it's like, there's a lot more, there's a lot more of that. It's no, you know, I'm not taking a dig at, you know, Chris Hemsworth or anything like that, but it's like, you know, there's more people like me than there are of like, yeah, who you would consider, you know, so to, so to see, I think representation like that and to have these, you know, these people living their lives, I think it's, I think it's, while it's definitely turned up to 11, I think it's very relatable to a lot of people. And, you know, that's another reason why, like, you know, like the first 20 minutes or so of the movie is really harsh. It's really gnarly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I think some of the only real criticism about the film 
um, that I've noticed coming from people is about that really. But to me, when I hear that, it's almost disheartening because it's, it's this thing that it's like, well, that's you just wishing the world wasn't like this. That's you just saying this doesn't exist. That's sweeping it under the rug where it's like, no, 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 no. People still talk like this. People are still this small minded and can be this mean and can be this brutal to other people. You know, like for every person that was like, oh, that's not like this. Every screening, you had somebody raise their hand and be like, that was me every single day on the bus. I was Patty every day getting spoken to like that and treated like that, you know? And so I appreciate Adam for painting that, that picture, you know, that first 20 minutes of the movie and, and, and really showing, showing what people go through, you know, how people are mistreated or, or how people are spoken to and, and, you know, what creates an outcast really, you know what I mean? Like what, what is an outcast? Like, what is the definition of that? You know, you have these people who sometimes get, get pushed away, like, and it turns into two different things. You can have a Simon who decides to push back, you know, and tell people to go fuck themselves and be like, go ahead, man, go try it, you know? And then you have people like Patty who are then considered an outcast, treated poorly, family puts their on too much medication, you know, all of these things when it's like, there's really nothing wrong with her. Mm -hmm. Like realistically, like, what are you, like, you say there's something wrong with her because you think just because she's different, she's wrong. It's like, no, that's not what this is. She's just She's just not what you think she should be, you know? It's, 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 it's like, it's, it's tricky and interesting territory to, to tread in. And that was one of my fears as well. My only fear of this movie was who was gonna play Patty? And what does that relationship look like, you know? And I mean, Emily just, and she came in and blew the roof off it, man. <laughs> oh, she's fantastic. She is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. As are you. Yeah. Oh, thanks, brother. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's all right. Um, just to wrap up, I wanted to ask, have you got any upcoming projects that you'd like people to know about? Um, well, we have this. Uh, and then <laughs> um, I just finished a film uh, called The Thing with Feathers. I literally just finished. I've been home for like three days. So that's like, it's a bit of a ways out. Uh, I have a film called The Catch that's, you know, kind of bouncing around doing film festivals right now. Um, Scream will come out, I think next year. Um, and then, you know, I got a couple other irons in the fire that I'm working on. <laughs> some personal stuff and some, you know, things like that. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for talking to us yeah. today. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.